Hello and welcome to episode 8 of our Chainbin Run campaign. In this episode, we have the opportunity to hopefully be able to go after Beyond Fang. It's something that we've been waiting to do for a while. We've been trying to find a way to go to war with them that doesn't include fighting their ally, Lin Jin Hui, at the same time. Because Lin Jin Hui has had a Great Conqueror for a while. In fact, I'm pretty sure this is a different Great Conqueror than the older one. I'm pretty sure they've had two in a row. I may be wrong about that, but I, th I think this is a different one. Uh, but they have a lot of troops that I don't really want to fight. Uh, they are caught up in tech, so I'd rather not. So, luckily, the command here has decided to declare war on Beyond Fang and is going to be occupying Beyond Fang's allies here momentarily. So, hopefully then we're able to go in and grab the provinces that we have claims on, because uh, that is rather important. Now, one thing I totally forgot about, when I released these nations, I did lose my claims on them, which is not a huge deal. Uh, that does mean that I need to get them back. So let's work on doing that. Uh, so I've looked through our mission tree here a bit, just to see kind of where I need to go with it. And what we need to do is start owning crown land. We need to have crown land, land owned by the crown at least 60%. Nobility loyalty and merchant guild loyalty, super, super high. Uh, so we need to start working on that and not selling titles. Luckily, we're already at 40%, so we are well on our way. Uh, and when the clergy are a little bit more loyal, we will seize land and get up to 45, so that's good. And then after we do that, we actually have to nerf the influence of all the other estates. So nobility, merchant, clergy, and adventurers all need to have influence lower than 40. Only the mages can be strong, and that will give us new government form. So that's something that we will look towards doing in the long term. Uh, I need to build a fort right here on this mountain province. I totally forgot to do that, and I would very much like that to happen. Uh, we could probably afford to build a fort on Arakelin as well. I'm not actually making 71 ducats, am I? Oh, no, I am. Oh. Okay. <laughs> uh, cool. Cool, cool, cool. Uh, we have Max Navy, so I have all the trade ships running right now that I can afford. I should... Well, I know there's a couple things. We need to build some temples down here in the Mystic Accord provinces. So let's do that. Not sure exactly which, uh... Yeah, I think it's just down here in the Lupulin Rainforest, right? Is what is required for us. Where are you? Learn from the locals. Yes, 15 provinces need temples. Perfect. We'll easily have that. No big deal. Uh, so yeah, let's let some time pass. And we are going to wait and see what we can do. Now, we are 20 underneath our land force limit. So we're going to want to build up to meet that. But we got to make a little bit of money back first. Okay, we're making 15 now. Okay, we're not actually making 70 ducats a month. That was probably because of the... I would assume the uh, treasure fleet. I was like, 70 seems really high. Like, I don't think we're making that much money. Uh, I do get military reform, though. And I will take the reform of the army. It's 20% morale of armies, too, for 10 years. Which, you know, that's not bad. Uh, but mostly it's going to get us closer to taking Tech 9 on time, which is rather important. Uh, make it 18 a month. We can get a level 2. Yeah, you're cheaper level 3. Hire you, why not? And the clergy just flip over to 50 loyalty, which means I can click that and get it back. Uh, yeah, I don't want to take trade ideas. I want to take Tech, preferably. Let's go ahead and take that. Gives us some governing capacity, which is good because we were over it. And we are in the middle of an event chain where we have sent out some explorers to find more magic gems. And we sent them into the Gulf of Rahen, which is where this event is coming from. The Amethyst of Sarhal. Captain's Log 1501-09-27. Our fleet found itself cautiously treading through the mouth of the Gulf of Rahen, weary of the many pirate fleets that roam this area. Unfortunately, we were not cautious enough, as one of our front ships blared the horn for being attacked. Fortunately, however, these pirates were not in the business of ransacking us. The commotion of a large fleet of Binrung ships had not gone unnoticed, it seems. The Naleni Harpies of the Sarhali Coast, known for their expertise in their hostile acquiring of goods overseas, offered an interesting treaty to me. They'll allow us and future Chin fleets safe passage through the Gulf, and in exchange, we let them in on some of the goods we plan to grab for Enroang. As trying to bluff ignorance would likely lead to a sword in my throat, I could only accept. As a token of goodwill, or a reminder of the deal we had to make, the Harpies handed us a small crate. Inside were some amethysts from their homeland. After our expedition's appraiser took a look, the gems were determined to house small illusion magic, making them look far shinier and more refined than they truly were. Whether this was intended to scam us or to show interest in our expedition is unknown, but we accepted the crate regardless. 
safe passage through the gulf, a pleasant surprise. We get plus one yearly prestige for 10 years, and we get the Necropolis's Opals in one year for 235 days. They are going on an adventure, apparently. All right, deal with this. And the moment that Lan Jin Hui no longer wants to join, we will jump on Bian Feng. So we'll just sit here, chill, and uh, wait and watch. I mean, hopefully Lan Jin Hui doesn't want to join. Otherwise, I have to go through the roundabout way of getting towards Bian Feng, which I don't really want to do. I'd rather just declare on them directly. But, you know, if I'm not given a choice, I'm not given a choice. Let's go ahead and suppress the rest of these rebels so they don't rise up. Royal patronage, I'm not paying that much money for some inno. Cheaper artillery cost, I suppose, is nice. And we could take the tech now. Do I want to take the tech now? So I'm going to get plus 15% tech cost here. Something like that, 10, 15%. So if I want to get the inno, I should just take it now. We haven't embraced colonialism, but it is slowly spreading. I think we just take it. Yeah, let's just take it. Why not? And then we can upgrade to standing arquebus, which are fine, I guess. They're not really great. Uh, gunpowder was long known to the Yan, but its use in war began only after the import of improved metal casting techniques from Shamakad developed during the Hobgoblin invasion, beginning with cannons and progressively miniaturizing. Yan armies made broad use of hand cannons and early arquebuses in their formation. Traditionally, these weapons would rest on a bident stand to stabilize the barrel during firing, the arquebusiers dropping back and resetting the supports before shooting again. Yeah, these pips are not... not great. I'm, I'm not gonna lie, they're not fantastic. We may need to rely on cavalry more to actually do damage in the shock phase here. Or any damage at all, for that matter. Uh, there's no way the command loses this, right? They're not going to lose, but the question is, will they push through to deal with their ally or not? I'm not sure they will, which would kind of suck. Yeah, he's going to have to siege down a lot of Lin Jin Hui to make them not join, because they really don't like me. Which gives them a lot of reasons to uh, join against me. Anytime. Alright, that vassal has been annexed. Very good. Thank you. Yeah, 18-6, 18-6. Yeah, that, that definitely feels like a decent army stack for us. Even though it's very expensive. Like, our infantry is just bad. It's just bad. I mean, even if Lan Jin Hui does defend, if they don't finish this war in time... I mean, at least they're weakened right now, right? Uh, a sloppy culprit. Uh, the occurrences were many, but things did not add up. Frayed ropes here, footprints where there should not have been, dust in places unlived in for decades. It was baffling. The final clue was the stolen valuables. Just why would a ghost need trinkets of gold and silver? One of the plucky adventurers noted, setting off an alarm in all their heads. By the time of the next haunting, they were ready, having set up elaborate traps as suggested by the party leader, with the cowardly hunter and his animal companions set up as the unwilling bait. Nice. Uh, a chase ensued through the manor, and the plan nearly failed, but a last-second redirection from the bard had assured their success. With the ghost captured and the townsfolk gathered, the mage went forward and confirmed their hunch. The townsfolk gasped, some muttering their disbelief, while one vocalized their vindication, I knew it! You all thought it was me, they cried, as the true culprit angrily grumbled the details of their plans as they sat tied up, bragging about the perfection of his masterstroke of genius. I would have gotten away with it if it weren't for you meddling adventurers. Uh, ghost sightings is removed. We gain 10 prestige. Nice. Okay, and now again, we're just, we're just waiting. We're just waiting. Please, oh, please, oh, please. And Beyond Fang is pretty much full occupying. Oh, the Necropolis is Opals. Captain's Log, 1503-0520. The many markets of Bim Lao vibrantly roused the midday, a sharp contrast to the imposing necropolis a mere distance away, its shadow looming over the crowds of people bartering and buying. Our client was somewhere near the market, in an abandoned shop alongside the Telebi River. The meeting had been planned by the Enroang for months, though the reasons why were kept secret from the expedition. I entered the abandoned shop with four guards accompanying me. The locale was not ideal, however. Our business had to be discreet. 
We weren't entirely sure how our N. Rowan came to know of an underground dealer selling life-sapping opals, but if our ruler was confident in the trade, then all we needed to do was carry it out. Surprisingly, the transaction was simple enough. The client showed up, showed us the product, we handed the gold, the exchange was made. What wasn't simple was the fatigue that all four guards and myself experienced as we moved back towards the ship. At one point, a guard just collapsed on the ground with little warning. I'm ordering the opals to be kept in a marked box at the end of one of the ship's lower decks, but after feeling what they could do, I wonder what our Anne Roang would want to do with them. We may be able to use this magic. Uh, plus two national unrest for ten years. Okay. Uh, these opals possess necrotic magic. This may be helpful in restoring Du Yen's spirit. Interesting. We gain 50 of each monarch point, and a prophecy of diamond happens in one and a half years. Well, a little over one and a half years. Uh, we can choose a new aspect. Let's go for... Sure, manpower and true faith provinces. And then we should be able to do a ritual. Ooh, we're getting a bunch of money. I wonder if that's tied to... I wonder if that's tied to our trade. Five random provinces that either have a dock or a shipyard will receive one base production. Okay. Five random provinces that either a dock or shipyard have a 50% chance to gain one production. Huh. So I want to build more docks and stuff so I can gain some development there. Interesting. Okay. I'll keep that in mind. It's 15%. We're back up to the mages being a little bit too strong here. You know what, let's just go ahead and accept some cultures instead. And Banyak. Just because, again, we need to accept them at some point. So, might as well just do them now when they're super cheap. And I have the Diplo points to do so. I could start going through trade ideas as well. I probably should to get this core creation cost. Uh, in fact, I'm going to. I'm going to grab that little trade power. And then we'll take this so we can get the CCR reductions. And then we'll uh, continue along our tech path. Yeah, I think the command's going to have enough war score here where they can probably peace out before they have to siege down Lin Jin Hui enough. Yep, there it is. I mean, yeah. Okay, well, we're going for it now anyways. Uh, Tawantad is our war goal. We are moving out. Sure, how many generals can I have? Three, let's make sure that we are at our force limit here. Two siege, not bad. Uh, you're actually better. And let's go. So. Oh, that's, I mean, that is a lot of forts. What did the command even take? Yeah, a decent amount. I don't like that command. I don't like you taking land. Not a huge fan. Uh, swear away, a 313. Nope. 313 is not a good air. I'm not going to lose... I'm not going to get a really bad air on purpose. I'm good. Thank you, though. Now, Beyond Fang's already on medium war enthusiasm. And all I really need from them is these three provinces. I do want them to break this alliance. That's technically all that I need. Everything else is kind of greed. Okay, our troops just decimated those. Uh, which is cool. You, let's grab this first. I, I want to go take their capital, but I also don't want to make it weird if we need to retreat for any reason. All right, and we don't need to send everybody on to the siege. Just like that should be fine. Try and not lose all of my troops to attrition if I can help it. And since I can, I will. Except for these. Uh, 461 air is reasonable. I will gladly take that. And we can start to siege down the stuff in the south. Thank you, command. Appreciate it. Go ahead and get claims there. Pull you back. When's my truce up with them? 1513? Okay, we still have a long, long time. Until that moment, so we're not too pressed for time when it comes to them, at least. Uh, the one thing I am kind of concerned about is the command pushing down to the territory that I want. Or Buvari pushing over. Though Buvari currently has no troops. If I could, I would go kill Buvari right now. If I could. Because there are tags. 
Yeah, we could like we could release Bim Lao. Like there are I mean it's mostly just Bim Lao, actually. Uh let's put guys up here. Like we could release tags from them just to weaken them a bit. It would be nice. Command and Bubari. If those two aren't dealt with, they can become issues in the later parts of the game, and we don't really want that. Because this run is going to go for a while. We need 40 Absolutism for one of our missions. So it has to go to at least Absolutism. Uh, which means we're probably going to make Yanchin into a just giant trade company for us. Because uh, we're going to take South Hales here in not too long. I do have a Subjugation CB on Han Sai, by the way. Which I would like to use. Uh, I'm trying my best to get to 15 Mercantilism without boosting it. Because we do need it for a mission, but I really, really, really don't want to boost it. Uh, a Prophecy of Diamond, Capital's Log 1505-0110. Sailing up one of the largest rivers in the world is by no means simple. The Kuranyana can be perilous, and we made frequent stops to survey the expedition for any damage to our ships. By the time we reached the port nearest to Tugayasa, we had stopped by Sramaya and all the porcelain cities before reaching the Raya Vetamana, our last stop before making the journey to Mount Tugayasa. Uh, just for reference. That means that we have gone up this river right here, all the way up, all the way up into command territory to like right here. So that is quite the journey up a river. Uh, the journey up the mountain took a few days. So when we arrived, I was quick to seek an audience. As we were sent to receive a prophecy on behalf of our kingdom, we considered ourselves to have a far more urgent matter than most. The three days we had to wait argued otherwise. When we finally managed to receive an audience with an auger, I prepared to ask them the many things I was requested to bring up, only for the auger to stop me before I could speak, hand me a stone wrapped in cloth, and say, this holds the answers you seek. As the auger walked away, I stood there, speechless. I remained speechless as we walked away, and didn't say a word when our appraiser confirmed that the auger handed me a diamond containing divination magic. It wasn't until one of my guards asked me what our next course was that I defeatedly replied, let's just go home. My 5% idea cost until 1515, and in two years and 70 days, the expedition will return home. I wonder what would have happened if we went north. I guess I'll never know. That would be interesting. Uh, the Craving of the Caterpillar. All right, that's another spirit event that we've got down here in Trazorana. Uh, many cultures speak of a spirit or ghost that leads people, especially men, to their doom. One such Halesi legend is that of the Malkun... Malkonu, short for the good caterpillar lady. Malkonu is a malicious spirit who ensnares married men with her singing and lures them into the forest, never to be seen again. It remains unclear whether they are consumed or used for procreation. However, what is known is that to men, she appears as a beautiful singing lady, while to unmarried men and women, she takes on the form of a gigantic screeching caterpillar with the face of an old hag. In the village in Trazerna, the Malkanu has struck, causing a disaster. It all began with a night of disappearances when over 20 men vanished from their homes, walking straight across the rice fields and into the local forest while calling for the good lady. A few people attempted to stop them, but as they neared the forest and the Malkanu, the faint screeching turned into loud, unbearable screams. The following morning, a search party was dispatched. They scoured the forest but found no trace of the spirit or the missing men. Only after hours of searching did they stumble upon something, a small cave. Inside, they discovered bones clad in torn clothing covered with what seemed to be wet silk string. They left the cave hastily, but took some of the cloth as evidence. Upon returning to the village, their suspicions were confirmed. The clothing belonged to some of the husbands. With no trace of the husbands other than the cave's findings, the village sought help from the state. The local governor dispatched a small group of soldiers to investigate the cave further. While they did find more clothing and bones, they found no living soul or any trace of the Malkonu. At a loss for what to do next, the local governor reached out to us to deliver the news and inquire if monetary support for the widows is possible. Although highly unusual, the governor deems it necessary as the village lost a significant portion of its working population to the spirit. Compensate the widows, it's the least we can do. Gain five unrest in the province. Uh-oh. That's not good. Uh, I don't want to push up here because I don't have a, any cannons on this tech. Though I should build more cannons, don't get me wrong. How much money can I get out of Lanshin Hui? Yeah, I mean, I'm not really in a rush to do any other wars. Let's build three more cannons here. And let's grab this fort next. And honestly, we can build like 10,000 guys down here in a cannon. And that will be enough to deal with Hansai. 
And then we get all this sweet reconquest, which is going to be super nice. Truce with this guy's up. All right. Uh, Night on the Mountain. Uh, Fuang Naga has awoken from his sleep. Uh, her sleep, please. Please. We have queens around these parts. Uh, from his sleep by a rumbling from deep within the earth, gentle as a lover's touch, and no less insistent. They rose, drawn into the garden beyond the bedroom window, clambering through it with a strange abandon. There, waiting regal in its azure gown, stood a peacock. It gave a single forlorn cry, then fixed its gaze upon the Enroang, waiting for a signal of a session. Uh, find your pound of flesh elsewhere? Okay, wait a second. <laughs> I have lots of questions. Um, uh, I don't want answers to any of them, though. Yeah, sure, we'll, we'll do the thing. Yep. Mm-hmm. It's fine. I'm, you know what? People in Hellas just do things differently, I guess. So, you know what? It's not, uh, not my place to judge. It's fine. It's a spirit. It's not an actual peacock. Just a spirit. Just a spirit. There's the 10,000 troops. Just do my cannon. There it is. Yay! And here's these cannons as well. We got to do with Han Sai. Let's grab free trade, and that completes our national idea. Unify the peninsula. The Bin Rung people originated deep within the Lupulin rainforest, where they were forcefully exiled after a coalition of tribes defeated the group. The remaining Bin Rung tribe, mostly filled with women, wound, wound up traveling north and unifying the small mountain villages of the Thitin Kai coast. Chen Bin, Chen Bin Rung is a product of these two cultures becoming one, and due to this, Chen Bin Rung believes only they can unify the peninsula. Minus 10% core creation cost. Pretty good. I do enjoy that. That does give me another merchant. Uh, at least a consistent one. Pirate? There's a lot of pirates there. From Zin Quan? Oh, that's you. But you like me. Ah, uh, you don't like uh, Long Zhi. That's why you're pirating. Okay. Well, just start pulling from Tian Lu. We're going to get this fixed. We're going to integrate Phi 10 soon, TM. 1539 if I wanted to do it right now. I would need to get rid of reduced research regulations. So we can do that. Now how long would it take? 1518. That's a little bit more reasonable. We'll start. Even though I am trying to finish our... Uh, we'll do our trade ideas. I do want... Well... Now that I say that out loud, it sounds kind of dumb. I'm trying to get my trade ideas done. Uh, apparently Ma Huang is alive. But I don't care. Uh, can I have access to you, Kibet Teleni? Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Easy war. Lots of cores. All good things. All good things. Alright, get that. I'm still waiting on a cannon over here. Where is my cannon? Hello? Did I not build it? Maybe I didn't build it. I would have sworn I built three cannons, though. I would have sworn. But, I mean, it's not there, so... Apparently not. Ooh, this is not actually a good fight for us. Never mind, it's a great fight for us. It's a wonderful fight for us because Lynch and Hui just abandoned their ally. I do question whether it's worth it to keep pushing through with this war, though. I mean, it's a lot of money to take, but there's a lot of forts in my way. Where's your capital? It's only up there. It's mm. a lot of defensiveness. Local fortifications. Oh, wow. And revanchism also helps. See, I'm looking at this right here, and I'm seeing that he's backed up to 37,000 troops. Uh, no, I want to recover. Don't want to pick any bad fights here. Like, yes, it's a lot of money, but at what cost? Uh, I mean, we could definitely get there. Can I reasonably get to that much, though? I mean, maybe with two sieges at the same time. 
Yeah, two seeds at the same time, we might be able to, to pull it off. In a reasonable time frame. We'll see, though. If they start looking like they're going to really want to contest me and drain away my money and manpower, then we'll just peace out. But for now... For now, we'll keep going. Yeah, see, like this. I mean, I'll take this fight. Yeah, like, they cannot beat me militarily, but they can just annoy me enough to where I'll leave. <laughs> I suppose that might just be their plan. Ah, just annoy the player enough to where they leave us alone. And you know what? It may just work. Me just work. Okay, there's the Siege of Hansai completed. Let's go ahead and peace you out. You will become a vassal of mine. Thank you very much. Unfortunately, I cannot enforce my religion on you. Tis what it is. Yeah, I definitely need to start annexing some vassals, though. Oh, that gave us plus one Diplo rep. Oh, maybe I do want to integrate Fight 10 then. Yeah, you know what? We're going to go for it. Final answer. Uh, let's cast Magnificent Feast for an additional plus one Diplo rep from the mages. We can fish for a Diplo rep advisor from our court here. Please. Thank you. Get you up to level two. So now this integration will be done in 1513. Make four Diplo a month still. Probably fine. Oh, I can't get to his capital until we take this. Uh, what I can do is go contest this siege. Let's get this stack over here. Do they really? Okay, they do have a general here. He's not a very good general though. Okay, now you can go and contest the capital. Yeah, wow. Oh, we also get plus one to our rolls because it's hills. We have like one whole morale on them. Wow. Yeah, that's gonna obliterate them. I mean, we are tech nine, so we do have the advantage of having tech nine over tech eight. But I mean, still, still, that was that was quite a, a good fight for us. All right, Lin Jin Hui. Yeah, you're not gonna peace out. Until I take your capital, most likely. So, let's just keep at it. And we're chilling. I'm looting. Oh, and rival home. The small fleet of Binrung ships sail into the port of Keoadin, their cargo lined with goods they, they have found on their trip around Hales. The Anroang awaits the expedition at the dock, eager to see just what we brought back from our travels. We will need some time to reorganize and prepare the second expedition. Oh, never mind. I guess I will figure out. Yo, the gongs are back. Wait, this is different, though. No, this is different gongs. These ones don't go bong, bong, bong. I guess those were bells. These are gongs. I guess it's different. Uh, what the heck are these things? Who sent them? And when will they leave? These are the questions puzzling the people of Gubatora. Yet no answers have surfaced. In Gubatora, a once quiet and peaceful community have been disturbed by sightings of what seem to be flying gongs. The locals find themselves increasingly agitated as these gongs hover over their village and speculations around about visitors from other realms. While the notion of extra hellenial beings might appear... <laughs> extra hellenial like extraterrestrial that's good that's very good uh observe and somewhat foolish the conviction remains strong among many of gubatora that an otherworldly visitation is on the horizon in response they began constructing sky shrines hoping to appease these supposed outsiders with offerings of jewelry gemstones and other opulent items nevertheless we suspect that these sightings and visits are nothing more than deceptive spirits toying with the locals one approach could involve assisting the residents and in increasing their offerings with the hope of placating the spirits and persuading them to depart Alternatively, some may consider attempting to shoot down these flying gongs. I uh, just increase the offerings, honestly. It's fine. 10% trade steering is nice. I don't really care about that event, that event at all. Lose 10 prestige to keep my admin advisor. Uh, Mage of Renown. I get a half price level 3 court mage. I will take that. Thank you very much. They're down there now. Yeah, we just need to wait for uh, this seems to be done, and then we'll be good to go. Okay, so the command pushes ever closer to us. Uh, we're going to have to fight them sooner rather than later, I think, which is going to be very unfortunate. Yeah, 
Yeah, with quantity trade, their quality is just going to be way better than ours. Way better. So we'll have to see how we're going to go about this. We're going to have to make a good defensive line somewhere. This is not it. <laughs> this is the opposite of a good defensive line. It's a bad line. It's just a grassland. I mean, down here in the south is fine, but if they push into the north, we're going to have issues. I mean, obviously we're going to have this mountain fort, but then if you look, like, the command already owns where I'd want my fort line to be. All this is just flat grasslands. So that's a bit of a problem. On Sai Separatists, they've taken the capital of Zhiyun. They're moving down to Wangpo now. Again, I'm not too concerned about it. As long as I can take this, we'll be fine. I am a good disease outbreak. They're bleeding troops, though. 15,000 to attrition. Come on. Please, please, please. Our Kellen Separatists. Yeah, we're going to need more troops down there to deal with them. Okay. Come on. 42%. You know what? Just barrage it. Just barrage it because we need to get out of this war now. Now it's taking too long. 64%. Thank you. Alright, you do that. Break your alliance with Tianlu, with Zhen Qian, and Bian Feng. Who's that? Lo Fao Song? I don't know who that is. Do I care who that is? No. I don't think I do. I'm not seeing... Oh, they're over here. No, I don't care. Not to lose money over. Da, da, da. Okay, stop that. I could have taken more money. Whatever. Would have been like five ducats. You make your way back. And Bion Fang, you're going to give me these three provinces. I'd like to get Zongji stuff back. Or get uh, Zion stuff back from Zongji. But for now, we're just going to take the provinces we need and peace out. So that way I can move on with my life. There we go. Alright, and we can complete uh, the Mountain King's Servant. Or, yeah, the Mountain King's Servant. Uh, the Mountain King trembles before the Anor Wong, surrounded by swaths of his hinfat sycophants. As she lifts her arms to bring her warhammer down, they gasp in horror, held back by her soldiers. But it is his nephrite crown that is broken. She stretches a hand out to the crownless dwarf, and he rises shakily. The disbelief of the hinfat turns slowly to awe. Perhaps even the lowliest people can be shown the way in time. With our guidance, master and servant becomes equal. The avoid a, a, event, a pointless chase happens, and we gain a bunch of claims. Uh, which is pretty cool. Uh, yeah, we just have to rush down here and take it all before the command does. Uh, a pointless chase. The Binrung soldiers were having a difficult time navigating the many halls and corners of the Nephrite Hold. Not only was the underground city a labyrinthine complex of alleyways and structures, but the local population wasn't exactly keen on assisting their recent conquerors. The soldiers were not just patrolling Verkulozovar, however. Anrawang Fuyong Naga has assigned multiple contingents of troops on one of many leads related to Du Yen's urn, which was so silently ripped from our nation's grasp during the raising of Nirik Vodun Kai. Rumors abound that a few loyal remnants of Kudet Kai entrusted the urn to be taken through the hold, though the direction they went or the building they hid remained a mystery. The longer Du Yen's urn was left undiscovered, the more time these ruffians had to whisk away into the shadows. Though the reason for this expansive search was not abundantly clear, the urn had become the Anrawang's highest priority. Time is of the essence. And for 10 years, we get 15% siege ability. Alright, it is 1508. Ping Hoi's truce is up in four years, and uh, we have some wars that we can definitely do against Lot De Kong and the like in order to secure our borders for our region here, even though the command technically already owns some stuff, which means that the inevitable command war will come sooner rather than later. But that is all the time that we have for today. I would like to thank you all for watching, and I hope to see you in the next one.